So today we're going to talk a little bit first about testimonies. And I want to do that just to have the teaching moment um, here because the, the opportunity is, is here to do a testimony. And they can be really powerful or they can be really lame. And I'm really truthful about it, right? And so um, I, some of you have been to services where, you know, the same person shares the same testimony from 42 years ago or whatever it was. And there's power in that testimony, but something should happen from that long ago till now. And the power of God's moving. So you can share what used to be or what it was. And and because uh, I can remember, I can remember when I first got saved, uh, watching my brother Mike, who had been in a horrible car accident. He was wearing a brace from here down. And they told him he'd never lift more than 50 pounds. They told him he'd never, you know, uh, walk right again, all kinds of different things like that. And, and of course, he's an avid deer hunter. And so he's like, well, what about hunting? <laughs> and so they're like, no, it's not going to happen. You're not going to be able to, to do that. And he came to know Christ and, and was prayed for. And you could literally hear his spine pop. I remember exactly where I was sitting in that particular church. And it was like, pop. And uh, he took the brace off. And he doesn't have any problems with his back whatsoever. So, you know, there's testimonies of things I never want to forget. Amen. That happened in 1982. I never want to forget that. Because um, that's a base part of my Christianity. But what we're looking for now is what happened in this last year? What did God show you? Um, or in a culmination of a few years led up till, till now. And the other part, as I've shared before in prayer, to technically, uh, there's a saying out there that says to have a testimony, there had to have been a test. And there's some truth in that. There's some, there's some truth. So, you know, if there was no test involved, there was nothing that challenged you in your faith, or you didn't witness someone else having that same experience, then, then it's kind of a story that's being shared, Right. So let's take a look at what the Bible talks about um, on different subjects. First of all, I looked up in the Greek. Uh, there's two different words for a witness or testimony. Materio is one of them, to bear record. And so, you know, it's like you wrote it down. This is exactly what I sell, sell, uh, felt. This is what the Lord told me. Here's the record of what took place. To witness evidence, to give the good report is another uh, one. To approve of. Ah, that is good. That is God. What just happened there is God. See, that's testifying. So there's all kinds of different angles of that. The other one that um, I like better is the one that's uh, martus, which is witness, or one who does whatever he has to do to be heard or seen. I like that one. I like going out and doing whatever I have to do to be heard or seen to be able to share the gospel. And so um, there's times that we get up and we share, encourage the body. There's times that we'll share with our neighbor or whatever, but there's times that you do whatever you have to do to be heard or seen to the point of death, if that's what it takes. Because that same word, martus, is, is, is in the family with the word martyr. And so when they said, and they went about being witnesses after the Holy Ghost had come upon them, that's what that means. Doing whatever they had to do to be seen and heard. Of the gospel. And so we should be in the habit of testifying, right, as Christians? Yeah. You know, we can say, well, I'm shy, and, you know, I don't know if I like to. But sooner or later, you're going to need to share. Exactly. Got to say something to somebody. Yeah. And so if you're here this morning, you're like, well, I'd like to say something, but it's kind of a big jump from talking to your neighbor to coming up front and being on a mic with the cameras on. That's kind of a big jump. And so you might have to work into that. It might not be your day. But at the same time, we have to be in the habit of testifying, of being able to be seen and heard even when darkness says, I don't want to hear you. I don't want to hear what you got to say. Uh, but I want to be heard because I'm, I'm following the Holy Spirit. And you have to follow the Holy Spirit at that time. You don't want to just be shooting off, you know, going off half cocked and every little thing. But when the Holy Spirit tells you to speak up, you say so. Yeah. Yes, right? We're ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so in some sense, when we come up here this morning, and those of you who are wanting to testify, and we've learned about this, we're standing up here representing. We represent what God has done in our life, what his word says. We represent that to the people, to the atmosphere. So there's one thing to think that we're just sharing with people. Well, that's powerful because testimonies influence, right? They're fluid with the power of God or not so much, depending on who's sharing. So we want to be able to get that to happen where it's fluid with the power of God. It's evidence. It's a good report. 
It's exactly what I've been praying for. It's I never knew he was going to bless me in this area. Did you know that giving is, can be a testimony? We separate that away sometimes. Just the fact you can give testifies. When you put that money in the plate, boom, there's my testimony right there. Mm, I testify. That's, this is good. This is good to give and it's good to receive. I testify of that. And people see that and they're like, whoa, he just gave some money to that whatever, to the church or whatever program. You testified by doing that. Odd times we don't know that. Praise and worship is time to testify. Yes, amen. So this is why when we first get saved, we might get excited and be like, I like that song. That's kind of cool. And it shifts into, I like that song. That's kind of cool to man. That means something to me too. I can't sing that without crying yeah. Yeah. to this is coming out of the depths of my heart. And when I sing it and I say it, I'm not just saying it to people. I'm talking to the whole atmosphere. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness in high places, right? So I want this up here to hear what I got to say, right? You need to hear that our God is good, that he's the best. There's none higher than him, that he's the King of kings, the Lord of lords. You can't even come to the Father except through Jesus. I want the atmosphere to hear that. Yes, so sometimes, you know, when I'm out ministering and, and uh, I can be in a really wicked place, I will say something that sometimes people will look and be like, well, that's kind of a weird thing to do at that time. Well, I wasn't speaking to the person in front of me. I was speaking to the atmosphere. I said it in such a way that they might not even get that themselves. But I know who's listening. And I want the statement to be true. This is what's happening today. Mm-hmm. And I will do whatever it takes to be seen and heard in this situation. Because I'm walking in the anointing. Amen. Yes. might sound cocky to some people, but it might sound sure to me. Yes. See, when you're fully persuaded, you're persuaded. Exactly. Amen. Amen. You can't not know when you know. <laughs> right? You ever try doing that? I'm not going to know, but you know. So it's too late. You already know. So you have to, you have to stay, you know, what's, what needs to go down in that situation. Another thing, when we are praising, we're making a statement to the spirit realm. We're acknowledging God. And isn't it interesting that he is right there in the midst of us when we praise? He inhabits the praises of his people. So therefore, when you testify, you can say the same thing. What's coming out my mouth right now is inhabited by God. See, then it's not, well, I share a little story with the neighbor and I was, you know, telling him about God. No, that was inhabited by the power of God. And that thing's going to go in them, no matter how small, how big, whatever the story was, whatever the witness was, and they're not going to have rest till they deal with what was said. And you don't even have to share something of conflicting, like you want to argue. You can just share of the goodness of God and that'll bug people. Right? And so that's that unrest of like, ah, they have something I don't have. I need something that they got. That kind of thing starts happening because it's inhabited with the power of God. So if you put yourself down and you say, well, I don't really know because if when I share, I'm not really a good speaker. Are you telling the truth? The truth in the situation? Are you correlating it? This is what God's done. Then it's inhabited by the power of God. You don't have to be an eloquent speaker. When uh, we first got born again in revival, I can remember how I witnessed to people. I was being a witness. It was like this. It was like, we went to this crazy service, and like there were people, and they were like, had their hands up, and then this guy over here was crying. I didn't know what to do. And it was the craziest thing. You got to come. <laughs> and they would come with us. A hundred people got saved in a very short period of time. It was like a three-month period of time. And I, and I think back, and I'm like, what did I say to them? I, I can remember telling my friend, I'm like, you want to go something really wild, really crazy? I don't even understand it, but it's so awesome. You just feel really awesome when you leave. Well, it sounds all crazy and, you know, kind of lame, and really, for a witnessing tech, but I was telling the truth. In the very tiny little bit of truth I had in that, in the, in the, in the sense of revelation, they got saved off of that inhabited by the power of God. Amen. So, Amen. so that's exciting. And so we praise when we're being persecuted. Yes. We praise when we're joyful. Yes. 
We praise when we're accused of something. Right? Well, your testimony might be this against me, but I testify. Mm -hmm. My God is good, and he sees all things, and he will settle things in the end. That's a testimony. See, I'm bearing witness of what I know. Now, his word can testify, right? It has its own inherent power. So you don't have to, you know, necessarily preach a sermon when you share something to feel like, well, I, you know, whether or not you shared a powerful, but sometimes God will say, share this word for that person. Read this scripture to that person. Recite something like this. And you might not even know why, but it's inhabited Mm -hmm. with its own inherent power, the power of God. And so that brings about change. Uh, the Bible says to search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Yeah. Woo! It's a testimony to us. We take it in, we choose to believe it, and then we testify it out. Exactly. Amen. Power in that. Power. Amen. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Yes. So when we testify the word, when we testify on his behalf, when we testify the prophecies of old that have come to pass, any of those things, if I testify of healing, it's the spirit of prophecy. Something's going to come in the future for healing. Because I testify it already happened, and here it comes again. See? This is powerful. Yes. This is, but we got to know what we're doing. We can't get all religious and, you know, uh, just do anything share a little story or whatever. This is how powerful this really is, and you have to see for, uh, for it, or it for what it's worth, I should say. Revelation twelve seventeen says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. See, now, but when the Comforter has come, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit. When the Comforter has come, when the Comforter is here, it's not just a blanket, right? Amen. You know, um, when the Comforter has come, I'll send unto you from the Father, the Comforter. Even the Spirit of truth, he shall testify of me. So the Holy Spirit testifies of God's goodness to us and through us. And the operation of the Holy Spirit, we want that to happen all the time, right? If we're going to walk in the supernatural, he's going to testify to us and through us all the time. When we think of it that way, it's like, huh, does that happen to me and through me all the time? I'm just putting it out there. We need to bring about and and come before God and say, then I need to change. If If it's not happening to me or through me all the time, my relationship with the Holy Spirit needs to change. Because he doesn't stop his operation because we do. He keeps moving. We're either ignoring what he's got to say or stepping aside from it, but he keeps moving. He's testifying all the time. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead that dwells in me testifies to me, and then I testify to you. Powerful. When I say this, um, I can tell you, you might think, well, this is a simple concept, but if the church understood this concept, there'd be more people getting born again there'd be more evangelism going on. Yeah. yeah. Now, sometimes we'll say something like, did you know God's word says, blah, blah, and we'll get a really bad reaction from a person. They'll pull back and they'll be like, well, you're so stupid. You're holier than thou. You'll get that kind of reaction from them and they'll pull back and we think we failed that situation. Ah, no. That just confirms to me I did what was right. Yeah. I get excited. I'm like, wow, I just spoke into that darkness. And there came the light. There came the light. And the darkness didn't like it. See, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? So when we're speaking to, to the atmosphere and to a person, we're testifying to them or we're witnessing to them. They're in darkness when they're without Christ. They don't understand the light. And when it comes in, oh, my goodness, it's bright. It's really bright. So they don't always have a like, thank you kind of reaction. That is not the reaction of some of my family members. They were like, I'm out of here. You're a freak. Okay, so, and, and you can sound like a freak and testify to somebody. Don't get me wrong on that because I've been testified to by some people who are like, wow, that, that guy was a freak. All right, it, it was self-centered. It was, I'm just saying, it, it, was, it was not Bible-based. It was in their own 
uh, agenda, and they were trying to sell me something. Did a series a while back that says that we're not hucksters. We don't go around selling our, 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 our goods. You want some of this? You know, all you have to do is this, and you can have some of this. That's not the gospel. Yeah. Right? So just clarifying some things here before we testify this morning. I want you to know that testimony is also very uh, powerful in healing. When you study the physical body, the molecular cells, the part, that energy that's in every cell, when it's convinced it's sick, it testifies against you. I have the flu. That's what it testifies. And man, can you hear it, right? You're like, oh, I feel awful. Why? Because your body's testifying to you. You have something that really doesn't belong to you. It needs to go back to the pit where it belongs, all right? But it's testifying through your body. And so this is why we don't pray prayers like, Lord, just bless this person and help them in their time of need and, and uh, you know, give them rest. All right, well, how did that testify to that cell that was speaking lies? You have to look at that cell or those cells in the body and speak the truth. I'm telling you the truth right now. I testify to you that the word of God says. See, we're not doing it just to get preachy. And I can do that, right? <laughs> so, so we testify the truth. And so here's a lie set up in the body. We speak the truth to it. Suddenly, the cells themselves have to go, whoa, because the truth is light, and it over, comes over and just kind of on that darkness and says, you're a liar. You are a liar. You're telling my body that it has the flu and it has to stay having the flu. No, it does not. See? And that's what causes the change to take place. But you've got to watch then what comes out of your testimony toward that. You know, it can be like, well, we'll just see. My mom always got sick once a year, so it's probably the same. It's probably genetic. Right, well, and your cells go, yeah, yeah, that's the truth, because I feel so sick right now. The hardest thing to do when I was on my deathbed is to get up, you're shaking, sweat's pouring, you just can't hardly see straight, and testify against something. That's test, its testimony was really loud. It felt like it was in every cell of my body, and it probably was. But my spirit said, you're a liar. You are a liar. And right now I just feel to stop and and let's stand. There's been some things that have happened with church people where recently they've gone to doctors and they're not sure what's going on, but it looks like, and it could be, and it's sort of lurking around like a lie. And we're going to speak against that right now in the name of Jesus. So we testify against sickness and disease that our God is greater. For he is the God that healeth thee. He is the Lord, our healer. And that healing power goes through every part of our bodies here at Word of Life and to the friends that are are not here presently. Every part of our body is affected through the blood of Jesus. And by his stripes, we are already made whole. It's already for us. It's here today in us. And so then we walk in it right now in Jesus' name, and we choose life. So therefore, we live. We live, we live, we live. And Father, I just thank you that your word shuts the mouth of the lies in Jesus' name. Amen. Ooh, that felt good. You may be seated. So I want you to know that that... If something has come against your family or your body or whatever it may be, your finances could come against your finances, it will speak a lie. And if you have nothing to say, it's already said what needs to be said then. If you have nothing to say. It's not like then that gets to be set over to the side because you have nothing to say. No, it takes over because you said nothing. So if there's people here this morning that are going through a hit on their finances or something just ain't right, and it seems like, oh, we need some change. I'm not sure where this is supposed to go or whatever. Say something about it. Say something about it. And if there's any time in your life which he has uh, blessed you at all, you bring up those times. Isaiah says that we are the prayer warriors and the remembrancers on the wall. And so we're marching back and forth, and we're saying, God, I remember you said this. God, you said this. 
You said this, Lord. And I remember this is the day that took place. And you remind him. And you remind your finances of the same thing. I give, therefore I shall receive. I give, therefore I shall receive. It can be that simple. I'm agreeing with the law of the kingdom of God. I give, therefore I receive. So whatever you got to say is opposite of that, and it's a lie. Therefore I shall receive. Doors will open for me. Right? And as soon as those doors open, you testify again. Unless the Holy Spirit tells you to hold this one for a little while, you, or get it ready in a certain way or whatever, you testify again and let the spirit realm know, yeah, by the way, that was the truth. <laughs> Just so you know, FYI. <laughs> and you let him know right away. And then testimony you will find will begin to prophetically bring more and more and more things into your life to testify about. That's the power of God. And he inhabits the praise of his people. He inhabits the testimony. So, Father, we come before you right now as we go to testify of the things that you've done and the things, Lord God, that you've placed in our heart, whether they be miracles or wonders, whether they be heart change, Lord God, whether they be truth that came to us, Lord. We're, we're just asking, Lord God, that... Um, you come right now, disagreeing with your word. We're agreeing right now that this is what your word says. You inhabit the praises of your people Amen. in Jesus' name. Well, let's go ahead and get a couple mics up here. I forgot how the ushers do that. I think they're over on that side. And, and uh, oh, here we go. So, Dean, I'm going to have you go first. Do you mind doing that? So, uh, how many hands of people want to testify again? Because we, we don't want to, like, over-talk everyone else. All right, so we're just going to give a couple minutes each. If we can do that, let me know up front. If it's got to have an extra minute added, I need to know that up front. Because uh, I'm kind of like pastor. I'll be like, done, because we have to keep moving, right? And I'm not afraid to do that. And so, <laughs> so why don't you go ahead and take the mic, Dean, and come on up and share. All right, but if I'm going to use my turn. <laughs> We were so close. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> um, wow. Whenever I was uh, considering what the Lord would have me share about 2014 for my wife and my family, um, we saw God move on our behalf in a lot of ways financially, um, with physical healing, but there was something that I felt he really wanted me to to share, and that was in what what we all all go through seasons. Um, we we all experience seasons, and there's a there's a scripture in Ecclesiastes that um, if if you guys remember the song from the '60s, turn turn turn, uh, it was talking about seasons and. And 2014, this year, has been a season for, for my wife and I. And the season that we were in um, can be described what Peter talks about, that our faith is, he compared it to, our faith is, can be tried like as though by fire. And I believe that God this year has been, refining our faith, refining our, our trust in him. Uh, and there's been times it's been like going through fire, um, but the thing that moves the hand of God is our faith. Uh, uh, all the things in, going on in this world, the thing that God will move upon is whenever we're in faith, and he wants pure faith, and I believe that this year that God has started a work in my, my wife and my family that our faith is though, is though tried by fire. And uh, uh, I wanted to also mention that whenever we go through seasons, there's always... Seasons don't last forever. <laughs> Mm -hmm. there's a time when you come up 
out of your season. Uh, I got saved in July of 1983. 31 years I've been saved and living for God. And there's one thing that I, I can say of this God that I serve. He is faithful. Yes. He will bring you through whatever season you're in. He is faithful. He is he will he will give you a garment of praise when you're in despair. He will give you joy when you're lacking it. He will give you healing when you're hurting. He will bring back all things that have been taken from you. Amen. If they've been stolen, he will restore it. He will bring you to fullness of life because he is a God who is promised and he's Thank faithful. You, Thank you, Lord. Um, that's kind of all what I had in my heart. That's awesome. We're going to go, we're going to get up and down here and say, let's stand up. Father, we just thank you for Dean and Tracy and Allison, Lord God. And we agree with that testimony. And we thank you that you're taking them through the season and the times are changing. The leaves on the trees are changing on their behalf, Lord God. And we thank you that you're never late. You're always on time and you're not delayed in any way. We just agree and acknowledge right now for their family that even more powerful things are to come in Jesus name. Amen. That was powerful. You can sit back down. All right. Um, Cheryl, uh, you can come on up. Dave had mentioned to me that you had a testimony. So I'm going to kind of go over the people who approached me first, and then, and then we'll move on from there. Let's see. The little green light. Here we go. Maybe it's the little red light on this one. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Okay. I just have to testify after Dean shared about seasons. I've gone through a season for probably 12 years that was very difficult. And I can tell you, and I proclaim this with all my heart, this has been a season of restored joy. This last year you, has Lord. been the most Thank amazing you, year of my life. And it's just taking some of those things that you have prayed for and you have wept over and set them on the shelf and say, God, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to set those aside. I'm going to let you get to take care of them because I know you're going to do that. And so um, God started, I think, with Manny Montgomery here was amazing. Some young people were here. Our son Nathan was at the Honor Academy this last year. And he has many friends in Cambridge and young ladies that are his real, he calls them his little sisters. And he would call me and he'd say, I'd say, Nathan, I feel like the Lord's calling me to have a Bible study for young women. And it was a prophetic word over my life many years ago that I've set on a shelf. And um, he called me late October, November, and he was weeping. He said, Mom, you have to save my sisters. And I said, okay, I, I get it. I'm going to do it. And many of them were here for Maddie, and we started our Bible study in February. Ooh. And it has been a life-transforming event for me and for them in Thank that um, those seasons of hard times that I went through, prepared me to minister into the brokenness of these young girls. It gave me words. I can declare there are no wasted tears. There are no wasted anything. Thank you, Lord. And, and testimonies. Dave and I have, have just poured into young people this last year and said, God is faithful. We failed. God was faithful in this. God met us in this. My mom came from a broken home, but God did this. And those testimonies are power to mm -hmm. change lives. Um, we also had many years ago been uh, daycare providers for a young boy that was orphaned when his mom was killed in a car accident. He was six months old and grandma got custody. This March, we went to his grandfather's funeral and the pastor didn't show up. I preached the funeral, Woo. which is pretty amazing <laughs> to me. It's like be prepared in Lord. season and out of season. Praise so I got Lord. to praise, uh, I got to do a funeral, which was um, a blessing to stand with this young boy and talk to his family and just share God's goodness and faithfulness. And then um, in July, I got to baptize, stand alongside Jeff Rood from Rock and baptize some young people Thank you, and Lord. stand in the water with these young girls. 
uh, our house has been open covered, open refrigerator, open door policy for a year. I cannot tell you how much food we've gone through, but I can't tell you how many young women and young men I've sat on my couch and held them and Thank just you. prayed with them and provided them a safe place to talk to how many texts I get during the day, and I work full time, and I'll get a text from somebody, you need to pray for me right now, or you need to pray for my family or my brother, and we've just been on it. Um, and then we also have had a couple young men living in our whole house from August till just right now. They came back with Nathan from the Honor Academy. God always has surprises. He's never, he's always prepared, but we never know what he's got do, going on. And it's just it's just been amazing. We'd wake up and we don't know if we're going to have five or 15 kids at our house in the morning for breakfast. You, we Lord. don't know who, how late they're ministering Thank to you, each Lord. other. It's just been yeah. a year of health and healing. And I can tell you those things that I was concerned about at the beginning of the year and for the last 12 years, God's hand has moved in miraculous ways and he is still moving. Things haven't come to completion, but I can testify God is moving and Thank he you, is Lord. faithful and those seasons do come to an end, but they're mm -hmm. not for naught. They are wonderful. Hallelujah. And I'm still, I'm just waiting for the next thing, the more things God's going to do, because he's so good. Amen. Praise you, Lord. So leave a clap for that. That's awesome. That's it. Roy, you had something? Oh, I'm already getting excited. I can go street witnessing after this. It's. About two years ago, I had a dream that said that I was facing this huge tornado. This thing was one of those class five tornadoes. They're just humongous, and it was coming right at me. And I knew when it was coming at me that uh, I was not the only target. It was so vast that it, it was going to take out other people. And so I thought, God, what is going on here? And so I pondered that, and uh, lo and behold, not too long after I had that dream, um, we had a new manager come in at work, and he basically got rid of all the long-term employees there, so I lost my job. And so I, I thought, God, what is going on here? I mean, I was faithful. I've been doing what you've been telling me to do, and uh, no answer. So as time went on, I found another temporary low-paying job, and then uh, I thought, God, I'm being cheated out of my wages. There's people working here. <laughs> that are doing the same thing I'm doing and getting paid twice as much. Mm -hmm. And so I started complaining. And, uh, and about that time, I started putting in applications, and I started saying, God, in Psalms 91, you said you'd never leave me nor forsake me. And I would start quoting scripture to him. I said, what is going on? I've been faithful. And uh, in a matter of about three days, I had two interviews. Uh, the first one I thought was great. I, I, I got that one. The second interview I had, I, I blew it. Well, found out that the first interview, they didn't hire me. <laughs> uh, this, the second interview that I went to, they called me back for a second interview. And <laughs> after my second interview, a couple days later, they said, oh, we want to hire you. And I thought, I did terrible on those interviews. What is going on? <laughs> and... Uh, Lo and behold, I've, uh, I'm happy with where I'm at. The wage is good. And uh, so I guess my point is don't be afraid to quote Scripture back to God. I mean, yeah. Take his promises and say, hey, God, what about this? What about this? And uh, That's awesome. That's aw and it's so true. So true, Bonnie. It's true in the... In the the light, too, he gives us dreams sometimes, or he'll give us warnings. Like, I've had um, deja vu. I don't know if, if any of you get that, but that's kind of like all of a sudden you're talking to somebody, and you could say what they're going to say next because you've already done this thing. And sometimes it'll go on for like a minute, and I'm like, oh, and they're going to say, and then so and so is going to walk in the door. It gets real intense, but that's God's way of showing you ahead of time this is what's coming. And that's how loving and merciful he is even we're like we don't get it our spirit already knows more than our head does and so it helps us to brace for that storm and then he'll walk you right through it Go ahead. um 
My testimony is, uh, well, from 3 John 2, it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Well, after many, many hours of praying and stuff like that, I started growing, but as I was growing, Satan was fighting me, and I almost died five times. I have a baby that is in heaven now because I didn't have the faith to believe for her healing. But now, as I have grown and I have prospered, people tell me, uh, you got to go get the flu shot because of your age. You're going to get the flu. And I say, I'm not going to get the shot. I am not going to get the flu. God is my covering. Amen. I am healthy. So they say, well, you got to go get the pneumonia shot. You know, senior citizens get pneumonia all the time and they die. Well, we had one senior citizen this year from senior dining who did die of pneumonia. And they said, Bonnie, you got to go get your shot. I said, no, I do not have to go get my shot. God is my covering. I am healthy. I will not get pneumonia. And these seniors look at me, and they cannot believe what I am saying, that I am not going to go get a shot. Well, because I have believed so long for my health and for my healing, God is now using me to pray for other people. It's awesome. I prayed for a lady, and her heart was healed. That shocked me. God, you used me, me to pray for somebody to heal. And I said, that is so awesome. It is so wonderful. But I have to say that as I grew in the Lord, he was the one that was protecting me and helping me. So I want to admonish everybody. If you're not reading your word, if you're not talking to God daily, then your strength and your power is weak. you got to talk to God. you got to get in the word because he wants so much to work through you. He wants to use your hands to touch other people, and he'll surprise you. They get healed. You're surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Praise you, Lord. Yeah. Let's see a show of hands again of the people who want to test. But why don't you come on up and we'll. I know how to do the green light, and I'm proud. (laughs) (laughs) This is really hard for me to do, but um, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Oh, put your your mic up a little bit farther so they can hear you better. There you go. (laughs) I would like to talk about what the Lord did for me this last year, since October, actually, of the year before. Um, The Holy Spirit talked to my heart about my social drinking. I am a flight attendant, so it's kind of the thing to do after the flight. You go out and have a couple cocktails. Not that I did anything bad, but he kept tugging at my heart. And he told me the only way that I'm going to be able to totally stop drinking alcohol is to do a covenant. Covenants are really important. There's Abraham's covenant. There's Mm -hmm. Jesus' covenant. Once you've done a covenant, there's no going back. I said to the Lord, I now do a covenant with you. I will not drink another drop of alcohol until the day I die, which I wish I could say is true, but I was sick and I did um, NyQuil. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> for for two nights and I felt awful and I was like <laughs> I know I know I just do I just felt gross but I mean I needed to sleep through the night but I just want to say it's never too late to do a covenant a covenant is still part of our relationship yeah. with Christ and yeah. if you have anything that tugs at your heart anything you feel the next day you feel ugly or there's something that you just don't feel is right. Mm-hmm. If you're willing to toss it all aside and do a covenant, there's no going back, and it it takes your heart. Thank you, Lord. It takes your heart. It's not like making a promise and then breaking it later and then saying, "Oh God, mm-hmm. forgive me, forgive me. Mm-hmm. I'm you know broke this promise." Covenant is different than a promise. It is the ultimate love. The love that you, the gift you want to give to God, what you're willing to give because He gave His life on the cross for us, the ultimate price. What's a covenant, a little covenant with Him, that closeness, a special thing to do for Him? I just wanted to share that. I didn't expect to come up here, but it's so deep in my heart. I don't, I feel that there's a reason I had to say it. 
Yeah. And um, I hope that somebody is blessed with that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you for sharing that. You know, um, this is the time of year, of course, after the holidays, that Walmart moves all the weight loss stuff and exercise things up to the front of the store because that's when everybody vows. Now, this is the year. I said, I'm telling you, I'm turning over a new leaf, and we'll do that whole thing. A covenant is not that. It's an exchange of your weakness for his strength. And so when you say that, you're not promising on your own strength. You're making a choice, but you're saying it's going to take you to get this to happen. And he does it in you, and you sit back and you go, wow. But a vow is something you have to fulfill. And, you know, if you think about it, if we could fulfill it in a lot of these things, we'd have done it already. <laughs> so we already know we failed at it, and now we're going to promise on top. So that doesn't work. So that's a real encouraging word that we, we go ahead and we move on that exchange with God in any of the areas that we need an exchange in. Who else had a testimony? To come on up. There you go, sir. Hi, I'm Dave. Um, we've been here for a little while, but I just wanted to share with you. Um, me and my wife were just to start out. We, you know, we're a small family. We had, we didn't have a very big income or anything. But I just want to tell you that, uh, you know, God has done some awesome things. We've done so much. Um, we've done mission work out of the country. We've done so many different things that God has provided for that there is no way that we could do it. And I start that way because I want to just share with you how um, we lost our house. We've done a um, lot of step backwards almost, it felt like. But we always kept our faith out there toward God. and. Amen. And and in that, we found that ourselves living with um, my mother in an apartment above her home. And, you know, that was great. But for <clears throat> me and my wife at 50 years old, you think, okay, we should have our own home. We should have our, you know, this or that. And But God is so awesome. We kept our faith out there. And then we started speaking those things that are not as though they were. Thank you, Lord. And as we did that, and as we took a hold of that, um, we lost her brother last year at this time. And so that was a setback. But we just kept our faith out there and kept speaking that. And uh, we wanted to do adult foster care. But how do you do that in a little apartment above the home? You know, <laughs> it's like, okay, God, um, I know all things are possible. Mm -hmm. And so we kept our faith out there, and we went through some other trials and some other tribulations, and we just kept our faith out there and kept speaking those things and believing those things. And as the door opened, um, some friends of ours were moving, and they have this huge house. Well, you look at that in our own eyes, and I go, there's just no way. I mean, how would we ever afford uh, a house that big with a pool and in a the answer to that is, is we can, but he can. And so we took a hold of that, and we started speaking that out. And I thought, okay, how are we ever going to get into this? And how is it going to, you know, you start doing the yeah. mind thing, going to your head, going, okay, I got to do this, or how am I going to do that, or do I have to go get another job? And you start going through your head and all this. And pretty soon it was like the doors just opened. Amen. And uh, they came and sat with us. We went through things. Um, believe it or not, uh, our down payment was a dollar. Um, <laughs> how do you even, I mean, I, crazy, I tell Lauren. people this, and I go, <laughs> I'm still kind of in amazement myself. And as he opened the doors, and he just provided everything, um, we had some things that we've always talked about, as you do, you know, as husband and wife, oh, I'd like this, I'd like a tractor, I'd like a uh, pole barn, I'd like a shop, you know, and my wife is saying, I like this and that. And we went and looked at this house, and it has all of it. It was God is so awesome Thank you, Lord. that he can provide every little thing, that, Thank every you, little Lord. desire. The desires of your heart are not, he, he knows, and he will answer those prayers. Praise so you, Lord. know that he's Praise awesome. And you, know Lord that God. This year is an awesome year for us because it just seems like the blessings are just there. And Hallelujah. I know I've heard other prophecies that, 
this here is the year of blessing. Yeah. Yeah. So know mm-hmm. that God is here. He's mm-hmm. blessing. He knows. He hears your uh, prayers, and he's going to answer them. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Well, let's stand again. we got to stand. Father, we thank you for prosperity on your people. Thank you, Lord, that we give, therefore we shall receive. We thank you that we are blessed in all things, in all ways, at all times, so that we might give, so that we might bring the gospel to this world, so that we might be an influence. We thank you, Lord God, for that. We thank you for new jobs here at Word of Life. We thank you, Lord God, for the peoples and setting them in the right place at the right time. It's prosperity. We come against poverty with the testimonies. We come against poverty in the name of Jesus. We choose life in this area. Amen. All right. You may be seated. (laughs) Who else? Somebody else was over. Come on up. We're milking this side first here. I'll move across. (laughs) All right, my testimony starts back in uh, 2013 and the end of the year. It was Black Friday, and I got injured on the job. I was crushed by a load of masonite that had fallen off the wall, and uh, it was pretty bad. Uh, I couldn't move. wasn't sure if I was, I don't know how many bones I broke, and I had internal bleeding. Paramedics got there. They stabilized everything. Brought me to the hospital. I heard the trauma team saying, prep the OR. He's got internal bleeding. we got to get this nipped in the butt and take care of it now and they start explaining to me that we're gonna probably do surgery on you um it's what what happened to you is very traumatic um you broke your pelvis in four places broke your back and uh so we've done the x-rays but we the funny thing is we really can't find the internal bleeding um so they said well we're going to do some more tests to see if anything else had happened. Uh, and they talked to the orthopedic surgeon, and he just came in and said he's not going to need surgery at all. Um, it's He broke everything perfectly. The word, I won't need any surgery. There was, no, there was going to be no lasting effects of arthritis. And that was it. He just said you're just going to be hospitalized for a week, and then you can uh, be released to orthopedic care in a nursing home. And he can do physical therapy there for however long it takes to get walking again. And I just, it just happened so fast. This whole entire thing was just unbelievable. And I had been working so incredibly much that year, and God had blessed me, and I wasn't recognizing it. And I believe this accident had, was start of, just the start of a big wake-up call that God had given me. I was not giving God anything. I was stealing from him and not tithing. I didn't have a church. Um, and so that was the beginning of it. And uh, later that summer, my wife had lost her job while I was on workman's compensation, which is not that great. <laughs> uh, I don't recommend it. So we were struggling and trying to figure out in our heads how we're going to do this because our mortgage company found out it had messed up on the escrow, and they are saying, now you owe this much to cover it. Otherwise, we're going to start putting penalties on you, on your mortgage. So our payments were going up, and my wife had lost her job, so we're trying to figure out, okay, so we have more debt and less income. Uh, I don't know how that's going to work. So we just were struggling and trying to figure it out, and uh, a friend of ours on a play date, by chance, had mentioned, well, have you uh, found a church yet? And said, no, no, we haven't. So said, well, my parents go to this church out in Princeton, up by you guys. You ever heard of it? He said, nope. Nope, never heard of it. So, well, we should check it out. So we looked online, found it, and we were like, yeah, kind of like this church. We'll try it out, like what they're saying. And uh, we came here to the first service, and there was my lawyer the week before had uh, suggested, because I was telling him my woes about how we were financially struggling. And he said, well, there is a little far out chance, a little fairy tale that you can write to your insurance company and tell them what is going on and uh, ask them for a little advance on your benefit for the end of the injury benefit called a PPD. And uh, he said, you can ask them for it. He said, they have nothing to benefit from it. They have, they have no reason to give it to you, but it's a worth a try. I mean, anything's worth a try. 
So I said, yeah, let's write it up, whatever. So that was the week before, and we had gone to uh, to try this church out here. And I had gone full out knowing that I was just believing for this to happen because we needed it so desperately just to pull out of the debt that we had had. And we had, you know, ordered everything up the year before and got these loans out and it was fine at the time, but not when you don't have any money coming in. So uh, we believed for it, and I just tied everything I had in my wallet that day. And I just said, God, I just know that you will provide and that you will work on those hearts of those adjusters, that people in insurance, that they need to see what is going to happen here. And uh, so I went just believing for that. And the next morning I went to my work hardening, and uh, I heard my phone ringing in the locker. My lawyer was on the phone. And I told him, I said, i got to take this. So I walked outside, and he said, Eric, I just got an email from the insurance company. You got the money. <laughs> he said, it's, they, they, give, they give you everything you ask for. Uh, he said, I just I can't believe this has not happened. I've never had a client that actually went through with this, and then it went all the way through. He just said, I, I don't know how this happened, but he said, something's good with you. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just like, oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Walking back in, I was just beaming with light because I said, we're going to be all right. Or we're just going gonna to be all right. Everything is going to be fine now. We have the favor of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And so we had a meeting with the next, uh, with my lawyer the, a month later. And uh, he walked in and said, you know, I still can't believe you got that money. He goes, if there's anything to prove that there is a God, that's it. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> yes. What, Chris and I looked at each other and said, yes, amen. <laughs> so, I believe God has needed me to go through this process to get on fire for him again because I was so lukewarm and not given glory to him for anything. And I needed this to happen for me to stop being so busy and to realize that he is the one providing for me and give me all this work. Thank you, Lord. And I didn't even think of this until we were talking about doing the testimony. But he needed me to be on fire for God. Yeah. Otherwise, he could never use me. And... I have so many people in my life that I need to evangelize to that can do great things, but they don't know God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they need, he needs me to be that light in their lives, and I wasn't because I didn't really have a light in my own life <laughs> at the time. Yeah. Yeah. So Thank you, Lord. I just want to give God the glory for all that he has done this year for us, Thank for the family time, for finding us a church, to put his money into just thank you Lord. thank you Lord. Don't, don't leave yet let's stretch our hand out toward him father god i just come before you in the name of jesus and i thank you that you've sustained his body healed his body created new things in his body and i thank you for prosperity upon his family and lord as he has testified i pray evangelism on him an impartation that's beyond anything that he's experienced before lord god that he will run with you as you want him to, that he will walk with you where you want him to, that he will say what needs to be said, and he will be heard and seen no matter what the cost. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Is there one more person in that section? There we go. Line up. And then we're going to scan over to the middle. We We got time, right? I tried to talk fast, my part, but... All right. Well, God's done so many things in our lives in the last couple of years. I don't really know where to begin. Uh, We didn't really discuss what we're going to talk about, but I know she's itching to testify about stuff that's going on with her and with us. So I drug my wife up here. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure she's got stuff to say. Um, This year started out really tough. Uh, January 1, I got the uh, Christmas gift of a pay decrease of uh, 40% of uh, what I was earning, which is uh, pretty extreme. So I really had a lot of uh, doubt and worry about how, you know, you've come to a certain level of living and you've got 
certain level of uh, expenses you need to cover, and 40% is a is a huge, huge hit. Um, but it also came with an opportunity to sell and uh, make some commissions. So uh, I had to seize that opportunity, and I had a choice to make that year, this year, to uh, grumble and uh, complain about the change of my responsibilities and duties, uh, or I had the chance to just praise God and uh, seek him further. So what I decided to do, um, we were, we were uh, bef- before this church, we were involved in a, in a ministry that I had trouble giving to. I really didn't feel in my heart that, you know, the money was the Lord's, the money wasn't mine, but every time I wrote that tithe check out, there was something in my spirit going, geez, I mean, I wrote it out begrudgingly almost that I didn't want to give this money. And uh, we got involved in this church last year, and uh, I just figured, you know what, this isn't my money, it's God. So even though I'm taking a 40% decrease, write the check. God's going to provide. It's got to be in his strength and his power. Thank you. Um, and so I wrote the check, and it was no longer with fear in my person of how I'm going to provide or make the house payment or it was this isn't my money it's his and so I wrote the check with a happy heart and knowing that it's going to a place that's uh reaching people for Christ so um I don't know how but 40 40 percent lower and uh, all our bills are paid there's warm food on the table our clothes on their children's back and we got a roof over our head and it's you know god is so good he's provided um this year for us given us some more opportunities uh our family is going to be moving uh to texas here in the next couple of months to uh have another opportunity my job is changing yet again with the same company with more opportunity but i get to get to lead and direct and have uh, a really an opportunity to, to impact some guys lives and, you, and testify and, and share what he's done in our lives. So that's what I had to share. Um, and again, I know my wife's nudging me over there cause she had some stuff to say. So, uh, he just moved in so many ways, but that's one thing I wanted to share with, with you that he's provided for us and it's scary and it's hard, but if you put the trust in him and, and just give, give back to him, what's his, He's going to multiply that in your lives. Yes, I, he will. Sure I, thing. I'm sure of that. Yep. Um, for me, I guess, uh, before we came here, we were involved in a cult, and um, we actually counseled with Pastor Mary, and that has been a huge walk for us because I have had a lot of trust issues with God um, because I really felt that I was called there, and um, just recently, God showed me that I, well, I've I've always known this, but I'm a works-based person, and where we were going, they kept the law, and they were very legalistic there, and um, for me, he showed me that I was looking for more than Christ, because I never understood God's love and I never understood his trust Mm. and so I guess over the year he's just been slowly showing me all of the things that I thought I needed to do to earn his love he's just been showing me all the lies that I've believed in um restoring his real truth into my life so I'm just thankful that he's very patient with me and um just that he has brought us through a lot and he's been very faithful and he's just showing me his real love and how to trust him which is you know hard but I'm getting there a little bit at a time so I understand the season thing because mm-hmm. I'm in seasons all the time <laughs> uh, just to add on that to where we where we did walk out of there was no testimony no sharing of dreams or visions or that was not in the, you know you could not share a testimony and how do you share how do you grow with Christ when you can't yeah. testify what Christ has done in your life so just this service alone of everybody showing 
up and telling everybody what, what Christ is doing in your lives and changing people and providing is amazing and is never happening in this other ministry. So it's such a breath of fresh air to see how God's moving in everybody's lives. Thank, Thank you, you for sharing. Yes. Father, we pray for them right now. In the name of Jesus, and we thank you, Lord, that you guide them no matter where they go, if they're to go, and then come back, whatever your plan would be, Lord God, we just, along with them, uh, agree with them submitting their lives to you. We call the blessing to them. We call the right people at the right time for the company, that he would be a blessing in that company, and, and it would be recognized and known that, ah, there is the man with the favor on him. And we thank you, Lord God, for that, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Amen. <laughs> Good morning. Um, I know that there's a lot of people over here that are just striving to share, so I'm not going to go too long here. Um, Eric and I are actually going to be working on a video here that I'm going to be able to show some of the work that I've done in this last year with guys like Mark Anderson and, again, in the Middle East as well. Uh, God's grown me a lot through those experiences, but I wanted to, God's been putting something on my heart more recently, and I think it's kind of uh, revealing itself tonight, so I just wanted to, or today, so I wanted to share that. Uh, clearly, there's a theme here of God's faithfulness, and God's been faithful to me this whole year in amazing ways with provision, uh, going on mission trips that weren't fully funded, and then uh, ending up with more than what I needed, things like that. God has been so good. So um, my year has been coming back from Peru on a year trip there on the mission field, as some of you may remember, uh, moving into work at Minnesota Adult and Teen Challenge. I'm repping that right now. <laughs> and, and, um, and then heading out on another trip. So I got back in August, and after that I had a house, I had friends that found a house while I was gone. They were all moved in. I, they had a room for me. I moved in there. And then I went on to face some challenges. And so that's what I wanted to share real briefly is that I believe God will take things from your past that you might have thought he would never work on uh, that are buried deep in that onion somewhere. And uh, as you peel away those layers, then they come up. Uh, something many people don't know about me, I didn't graduate high school. I had a, a 0 0.6 GPA my senior year. <laughs> I was very depressed. I had a lot of anxiety. might not seem like it now, but that's the grace of God, right? So, um, yeah, so now I'm going back to school uh, through what I believe is my call, which is to do physical therapy uh, with children specifically. And so um, it's just been a really interesting time because now I'm going into all these classes that I had so much difficulty with in high school. And God's giving me, through his grace, the drive and the ability to do it. But it's a daily process of sitting down with him and sometimes agonizing with him. Lord, I can't do this, but then speaking that life of the word. So um, as I thought about different things that I've seen this year, I just wanted to share with you what I've been doing, which is relying on the past and knowing what God has done and his faithfulness. And in Psalm 77, I highly recommend it. The writer is uh, lamenting over what's going on in their circumstances. But then he says, Then I thought, to this I will appeal, the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will meditate on all your works and consider all your mighty deeds. Yeah. So, you, amen. If you guys are going through any of those seasons, as we've been mentioning, just proclaim the faithfulness of God in your past. And call it into your future. Thank in you. Jesus' name, yes. Good word. Good word, yeah. Thank you, Lord, for blessing him and continuing him on and restorative uh, things, Lord God, and causing new things to take place in his life through the blessing. In Jesus' name. Who in this middle section here? It's powerful. Mm. <laughs> morning everyone um you know as i contemplated what what how should i communicate um all that god has done i guess i can just sum it up into one phrase 
what the heck just happened here <laughs> for this whole entire year? Things that I've gone through in my life. God is just so good to us. We all know that. But things are coming to pass that I have been um, crying out to him for a long time. But this year in particular has been wow. Um, I have a few different jobs, and I'm praising God for those. Uh, sometimes it would be nice to just have one and nine to five, and that'd be great. But in that, um, I just want to say that God has um, brought me to some places to teach me skills, um, specifically, <laughs> oddly enough, it was never on my radar, but he wanted me to start a home cleaning business. So he brought me to a company, and I learned everything there. And the woman was a believer, and she said, yeah, great, no problem. You know, I can, you know, teach everything you need to know. So I was at one place of, you know, employment, and then he brought me into another to teach me that. Then he brought me back to the other place of employment. Favor just opened door. Yeah, come on back. We, we need help. And so I got all that skill, and I thought, well, okay, now what do I do? And just some internal conversation with God. And all of a sudden, you know, he just started having people say, hey, do you, you know, I, I heard that you were cleaning houses, you know, with, you know, another company. Do you, ever, do you do that on your own? And, I mean, just things just are starting to happen. Thank you, Lord. And in that, um, <laughs> wouldn't you know, he's just, you know, so funny to me. And as I'm in those homes, um, you know, I've had an opportunity to pray with, um, you know, because there are some elderly people that I was cleaning homes for. So I've been able to pray with them for healing and, and you. just, uh, you know, encouragement in their heart and in their spirit. And so what has been a whirlwind for me, you just say, whatever you want, Lord. You know, I'm yours, whatever you need. And next thing you know, I just feel like there is this whirlwind going around me. But in that whirlwind, he is teaching me and training me and, you know, just the things that I need right now. And it's, you know, it's like, okay, now here and here and here. And, you know, you obviously I'm grateful for seasons that this won't be forever. But in this, how amazing is God to bring me somewhere, teach me this? I mean, everything. And not only just teach me in that company, but he also has brought people in my life that for free, he, um, you know, they will, you know, for the business side of things, the administrative side, you know, for free, they're teaching me how to do business plans and how to market, and they're doing all this for me. And I'm thinking, what the heck just happened here? <laughs> <laughs> so... That has just been amazing in itself. But also, I just, you know, I'm praising God for, um, you know, just ministering to women. I know that that's on his heart for me to minister to women. And, you know, the place that I live, there's, there's families right next to us. And, um, you know, our front step has just been amazing for that. And so I've had an opportunity to... Um, you know, pray for some women out there that are going through some hard times, that have had hard times their whole entire life. And, you know, next thing you know, they're feeling the presence of God. And, you know, their hearts are changing around. And, you know, where they were hardened in this area, you know, they're starting to kind of, you know, have healing and restoration and that kind of stuff. So that's been a blessing as well there. Um, and then speaking of restored relationships or healing of relationships, um, something that's been on my heart for a long, long time, and healing relationships with my father. And this year, um, my dad had some cancer in February, and through that, <laughs> I had to um, help him daily with some bandaging, and sometimes multiple times a day. And through that, I mean, I was weary, you know. Sometimes he'd call me at 4 o'clock in the morning, and, you know, I need some help. So going over there, my father and I um, have had a restored relationship completely. Thank you, Lord. Absolutely Thank you, completely. Lord, you know, um, I just, I'm so grateful to God. Thank you, that Jesus. was probably one of the biggest things on my heart that I could ever have wanted. And God brought that to me this Thank year. God. So even in the midst of 
um, what was a pretty difficult situation with cancer, he brought that restoration for me. So I'm, I'm grateful to that. And <clears throat> just jumping back to the um, employment situation, again, what the heck just happened here? Uh, you know, as I'm back working at this daycare, you know, there's women there working, and next thing you know, this just one at a time he brings these women to me, sharing her heart and this kind of thing, and next thing you know, God's moving on their heart for salvation. So two people from the daycare I work, uh, work at gave their life to Christ, and I just think, what the heck just happened here, you know? Moving me from one thing to the next to the next. God is so good. Yes, he is. So good. I'm so grateful, even though it's been, like I said, this amazing whirlwind. And um, I guess also just um, another thing I wanted to testify about is not only healing in my life, but God is teaching me about healing um, and some of the principles about that. Um, So for myself... You know, hey, do we sometimes get a bad attitude about things? I'll be honest, I do. <laughs> and God is showing me that, you know, in that, in that bad attitude or that, you know, that change in your heart, you're opening up the door for things on your life that are, are stealing your health. And so he's teaching me. So I'm grateful for that. And so in that time you know, repent of that, and God, you know, change my heart, and show me, and teach me, and train me, you know, I don't want to be that way, and next thing you know, you know, I'll pray over an area of my body, my hip, or whatever it is, and I can feel supernatural change, so I'm grateful that in that time of my, you know, little grouchy behavior, all of a sudden, he's training me, and teaching me, so that I know what it's like, and I can share that with other people. So, um, and another thing I just wanted to testify on healing is that um, just the supernatural power of God when he's healed my horse um, from one thing to the next this year, um, laying hands on her and mentally and physically just healed her. And so I just want to testify to that too. How many of you had an animal that got healed after you prayed for him? Yeah, yeah, we've done the same thing. Thank you. Father, we just come before you and we thank you for that testimony. And as she was speaking, this is kind of what was going through my mind. He inhabits the praises of his people. And how you praise him, it kind of shows his character in that area. So there's been a lot of talk about prosperity and healing in the physical body. And so that's the anointing that is here right now. So if you were needing that, just raise your hands before the Lord and receive. Father, that which was testified for others, you will do on our behalf because that's the kind of God you are. And we thank you that you're moving in these areas right now. So we receive all of your goodness and your character in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Was there anybody else? We've got just JP. Well, we'll we'll go JP and then, oh, they're going to duke it out. No, somebody pick. I'm like, somebody pick somebody. (laughs) Hurry up. All right. I think we got time for a couple here, so, and then we're done. So a few weeks ago, Pastor brought me up front here and did a a little illustration where he was talking about having your car be broken and not knowing how to fix it and asking the Holy Spirit. And uh, the reason that he did that is because he's he's heard my testimony as we've been talking over in the, the Men of Iron meetings and... Uh, I wanted to expand on that a little bit here. I've had seasons, long ones actually, in my life where uh, just due to choices that I actually felt like were the Holy Spirit, um, we didn't have the money to fix vehicles and uh, or to pay somebody to do it. Uh, Luckily, I have an an uncle who works at a huge parts dealer, so I get parts for pennies. But at the beginning of this season, I had no idea how to fix vehicles. And, you know, I've got a couple of manuals that show you some stuff. But a lot of times they don't give you enough info. And I would be in my garage or in my shop laying under these vehicles and having no idea how to fix them. 
And I had no choice but to say, God, you've got to anoint my hands to fix this thing. You have to show me how to do this. Because if you don't, I'm going to be stuck here. And I've got a wife and kids that I've got to provide for. And, you know, he didn't always show up when I wanted him to. He didn't always come with the really quick answer, but he always showed. And when I sat back down after Pastor was given that, that illustration, I began to think back on that, that season. And, you know, there was a lot of times that I got really carnal underneath those vehicles. And I don't, I don't mind telling you that. There was, there was moments when, well, I'm just not going to describe those. Um, it's not appropriate for church um, or anywhere else for that matter. But at any rate, the, what that season actually became, like the Holy Spirit would come and he'd, and he'd show me how to do this stuff and he would, he would explain things to me. And I actually, I got to the point where I could, when I was starting to fix something, I could see the bolts where I'm like, you know what, that's going to need some penetrant on it, something to break the thing loose because it's rusted solid, it's going to take forever. And I'd start to be able to see these things about my vehicles. And if something would start going wrong, God actually began to give me wisdom about them and, and I could understand what was happening and be able to fix it. And he built this thing in me that as I sat here that day, I realized that, you know what, now I can actually minister to other people that are having car problems. And the very next day on the ride home from work, I'm, I'm thinking about this again. And, you know, as I get close to home, the street right before mine, which had it been any further, it would have been a little bit difficult to do, but the street right before mine, there's a car with the hood up, the flashers on, and the guy sitting inside. He's not even looking at the car. He's just sitting in there giving up. And I'm like, okay. We were just talking about that, Lord. And, and so I went back there, and, and I, just, I began to look at his vehicle and ask him what was going on and, and essentially fix the thing for him. And he, he began asking me, he's like, well, you know, you're some sort of mechanic or something? And I had the opportunity to share with him. I'm like, no, no, no. I've just been in the spot a lot where I don't have the money to fix stuff. And I had to ask God how to fix it. And he speaks, and he'll tell you things. And, you know, this, I, I just got to testify for like, I don't know, a half hour to this guy. And, and, I mean, he was happy to listen, willing to listen. I had, I had the answer for this problem that he had that he couldn't get away from. The only solution he was even looking for in his life at that moment was this car, because this car was stopping him from everything. And these years of lying underneath my car, crying out to God, how do I fix this thing? Gave me an opportunity to speak to this man's life. Thank you, Lord. As we were wrapping up the conversation, he shares with me, he's like, you know, I just got divorced. And it's my birthday. And I'm trying to go pick up my kids so I can spend a couple hours with them. And I just, I'm like, I was blown away. I'm like, Lord. You know what, forgive me forever, forever looking at this season of difficulty and of trial with disdain. Forgive me for even being frustrated with what you were trying to build in me. And I think it was last week, Pastor began to talk about what you have sorrowed is so you can comfort somebody else. Mm-hmm. And it never, you know, never clicked with me that these difficult things that we go through and these, these loads and these burdens that sometimes almost snap us mm-hmm. are for other people. Yeah. They're not... Let me back up for a second. Prosperity is not just about money. Amen. It's about overcoming. Yes. It's about the ability to have whatever it is come yeah. at you yes. and possibly get you right up to where you are pressed and squeezed and in so much pain that all you can do say, God, how do I make it through this? Yeah. And that's where he ends up. That's where he ends up hanging out. Because freeing the afflicted, that's his main business. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and, you know, I got to speak with somebody yesterday that, that uh, is, a, is a 
very dear loved one of mine. And actually, her and her husband are some of my heroes. And she was sharing this season that they had gone through um, where there was some very, very painful things that they went through. And as she and I were talking, you know, the Holy Spirit showed up and, and it clicked that, like, even this pain that, that she was talking about that was, I, I, I'm not even going to go into detail of what it was, but it was absolutely horrific and I can't imagine recovering from it. But she did. And she did so that this place where she is in her life she can minister to these other women that don't have that hope. Yeah. And, you know, when we go through these trials and when difficult things come at us, one of the things we've been talking about in the Men of Iron meetings, which have been revolutionary for my life, is that the only way to really know if you're supposed to, to pray and to testify to something, hey, just get lost, versus, you know what, there's something I need to learn about this. Mm-hmm. There's something God wants to build in me. The only way to know that is through an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. And when you realize that what you're going through and what you're dealing with might save someone's life, you can begin to embrace those things instead of just constantly shouting at them and trying to run from difficulties. You know, Corinthians, the second book of Corinthians, it's actually all the way through the Bible, talks about afflictions. And I always thought that they were just about you know, oh, well, you know, Jesus was persecuted because he was righteous. No, the afflictions of Jesus go far beyond that into the night before he was going to be crucified. He knew exactly what was about to happen. He knew the pain he was going to go through. He knew that they were going to whip him and beat him, and his skin was going to split open and curl back. And they were going to beat him to the point that he no longer looked like a man. But when Peter tried to stop people, Jesus rebuked them. And he said, no, nah, you don't get it. You don't get what's trying to take place here. And, and the freedom that comes from understanding that your difficulties aren't just to kill you, and they're not just to be avoided, yeah. uh, is, is very, very freeing, and it's made a, a massive difference in my life. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. That's a witness to us, right? Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Why don't you come on up? You turn around in case there's somebody behind him. This, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ralph, and uh, I'm going to just speak quickly about uh, this year. Um, the Lord's been working all kinds of things in our life, uh, my wife and I and our family. But this year, uh, we started out work down in the cities which I dislike tremendously. And uh, at the end of February, he opened up a job for me up in northern Minnesota, not far from, well, closer to my house, and I don't have to deal with the traffic of the city. Um, It was for more money, which was awesome. Um, I only had to work for three and a half days a week, actually, which was great. Um, There was a series of... uh, misfortunes, and car troubles, and things like that. And it was gobbling up every bit of extra cash we had. But, you know, my trust in him stayed all the way through that. Thank you, Lord. And he yeah, ended up, him. we always had the money to fix them, and they were bizarre things that went wrong. But we always had the money to fix them. And then they cut back our hours because things got slow. And that was kind of a letdown, but it was like, you know, it's out of my hands. It's uh, everything I have comes from him, and uh, he instilled that in me in a long time ago. My mind still has a tendency to go all over the place with it, but um, just uh, trusted in him. And then all of a sudden he showed me that um, with those hours being cut, now I only work three days a week, and we've been able to pay all our bills and he's actually put ministries in front of us to support financially. Yeah. So we got less money, got all kinds more time. My wife and I spend more time together now than we've had our whole life. And uh, we've had, I, I mean, 
the abundance is everywhere. I told her the other day, I said, we've got to stop buying food, man. Our freezer's too full. <laughs> and it's like, I don't, you know, I mean, he just keeps just pouring out stuff on us. I mean, there's so much. And I guess all I want to say to you is, you know, never lose hope no matter what's going on because yeah. a lot of times there's tremendous blessing in, in the things that we think are trouble. Yeah. And so. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you. Yes. Let's all stand. Uh, this morning, if you did not get to testify, because I'm going by the time here now, please contact uh, the office because there are other times we can pull you on up and, and, and do that. So today was the day we tried to get as many in as we could. But, Father, we thank you for all the testimonies that inhabit your your uh, presence, Lord God, that are resting here, and they're going out into the spirit realm. They're going out into the, the waves on, on uh, the computer. All of that type of stuff that's going on, Lord, we give you praise for that. And we thank you that even more testimonies will come. Just by testifying, we're going to see more and more of the goodness of God, and we're going to take every opportunity we can to share you. In Jesus' name.